Our next speaker is Jenna Bendrup of BlockSafe, and she'll be talking about the blockchain service provider for the defense industry today. So please welcome Jenna Bendrup. Hi everyone, my name is Jenna Bindarup and I am the Chief Communications Officer for a company called BlockSafe, which is the blockchain service provider for the defense industry. And today I'm gonna outline the landscape of blockchain in the governmental space and introduce BlockSafe, which is um, a distributed ledger and cryptocurrency platform that is poised to provide security and utility to the government sector. So I don't have to tell anyone in this room that blockchain is on an adoption cycle in many industries and nowhere is that more applicable than and relevant than in the government space. For example, government agencies across the board are taking an interest in distributed ledger technology to the point where According to the General Service Administration, federal agencies are eager to better evaluate and adopt distributed ledger technologies like blockchain that use encryption and coding to improve transparency, efficiency, and trust in information sharing. So this is gonna play out in many areas. For example, blockchains are being explored in financial management, procurement, IT asset and supply chain management, smart contracts, patents, trademarks, copyrights, royalties, government issued cred credentials like visas, passports, social security numbers and birth certificates, federal personnel workforce data, appropriated funds, and federal assistance and foreign aid delivery. That is a mouthful. Just put a blockchain on it, right? Everything. But. The specific agencies that we're looking at are the, D the DOD, the FDA, the DHS, and the Department of Commerce. The Department of Defense specifically is seeking applications for the military, including logistics, supply chain, and cybersecurity. And in the 2018 National Defense Authorization Act, there is a quote with orders for the Secretary of Defense to provide Congress with an assessment of the use or planned use of such technologies by the federal government and critical infrastructure networks. And Forbes reports that blockchain is being adopted by government agencies with RFPs being issued and exploratory studies already being conducted. So we're seeing a real emergence of this be and a lot more interest than in the past, right? Enter BlockSafe, which is pioneering this technology for the government sector. Next, I'm gonna give you an overview of this project. I'll talk a little bit about the partnerships that we're looking at and what is in store for the future. So broad overview, BlockSafe is basically building a secure private blockchain network solution that government agencies, individuals, and private corporations can use for their ecosystem. And the whole network is powered by the trig triggers token, which is called trig on the exchanges. Essentially, the network is a cybersecurity platform that is on top of the blockchain. It is a network that can be used to develop and host innovative solutions and technologies. It applies to government, the private sector, and individuals, and our current focus is the defense industry, although it has, it can be applied to anything, but that's, that's where our focus is currently. Any device or system based on this network will see improved flexibility, speed, anonymity, and safety features. The really exciting part is that we are adopting partners and incubating them as part of our network to grow, to grow. And these are all based in the defense industry. So for example, you've got Justifier, which is a, it's an environmental recording apparatus that goes onto a firearm. 
and it records audio, video, and spatial, everything. Basically, uh, it has full spatial awareness so that when you fire the weapon, the, it's, that is all recorded. And that, evident, that can be used as evidence by the firearms owner in the event that there's ever need to use it in a situation that is potentially lethal. You can use that as evidence. There's also Trigger Smart, which is a, an RFID solution that goes on a smart gun that makes it possible for a user to disable the weapon or um, only, only authorized users can, can fire the weapon. So if, if you give it to a child or if an intruder would somehow come across the weapon, it would be rendered harmless in their hands. Gunnery is a, uh, it's, it's a secure gun owner diary that a, a gun owner can use to store encrypted gun information. And um, that's done through a, an expiring key that the owner has control of. And then Kicker Design does prototyping and engineering. So these, this, this is part of a, this all forms kind of a consortium of creating a, an ecosystem for development. And we're exploring more partnerships and are in the final testing phases of the network scalability and application to these use cases. A little bit of background, BlockSafe was founded by its CEO and chairman, Kevin Barnes, who is a US Army veteran, a blockchain developer, and a passionate advocate of gun ownership. He is a tech coder and has 20 years of experience. In the third quarter of 2017, BlockSafe held a token sale and raised 240 bitcoins. And in January, we were approved as a government contractor, which is a big deal because not everyone gets that. Currently, we are doing core dev testing through March. Our intellectual property holding company is going public in Canada and the United States and will be offered in a traditional stock offering. We are onboarding new hires who have decades of experience in the, in the governmental sector, and we currently have 40 letters of intent to pilot the network, including uh, the Chicago Police Department. So there's a lot of action going on right now, and in the future, we are continuing to seek partners as the team develops a decentralized exchange where projects can incubate or build onto the platform. This decentralized exchange provides some new opportunities for customers to have different packages and, and the community members can really incubate the projects that they find most interesting. As far as development and projects, we are, we are open and invite them. Uh, developers can uh, use our SDK and API, and for a fee, you can get your own token. BlockSafe is a family, and uh, you can learn more by going to BlockSafe Foundation, BlockSafe Network, or BlockSafe Co. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I'm here for questions, and my colleague Manny, who is the chief marketing officer, will be joining me to answer those on the stage. So thanks, guys. Anybody? <laughs> thanks. What do you want to know? So we're in the, like she was saying in March, we're in the process of getting those, um, like the core testing done through March. We can release, uh, we'll be able to release more information after we get that thoroughly tested out and done. Uh, Master Node is gonna be 1500 tokens. And once we have that information, like I would say mid quarter two, we'll have that solidified and released. Uh, 
Blocksafe is developing its own proprietary blockchain. There will not be a token or another, we're not gonna be part of Ethereum or any other chain. We're creating our own and we're gonna have a main chain and for all of our partners to keep our network light, they're gonna have their own sub chains. So if you saw all of our partners, Justifier, Trigger Smart, Gunnieri, right? Um, to make sure that our chain is always able to transaction all of, like we're gonna act as a gateway. So as uh, somebody can hit our, you know, our master nodes or our network and all that information gets stored on their sub layers, on their sub chains to make sure our main ne uh, network can do the transactions immediately because the industry is gonna need that. Justifier is a device, like she was saying, that does audio, video, GPS, and spatial unawa awareness. And that's gonna be applied to uh, law enforcement or whatever is. Uh, the Chicago Police Department, for one, was one of the ones that was interested in piloting those programs. So you can immediately understand that those devices cannot have any delay because then it would put officers' lives at risk. So we're trying to make it as lightweight as possible to make it as fast as possible. And then because of the Internet of Things, the blockchain and all that, those devices provide accountability because it's immutable and the response times would go through the roof because the immediacy of that information. Um, just to follow up on that, we basically create custom blockchains. And most of what that has been so far has been applied to hardware and devices, right? So if you have a device that creates data and it connects to Bluetooth or the internet or some other some other uh, connection point, that data is then put onto our blockchain. So it's basically a blockchain service provider. Any other questions? No, currently we, uh, we were at 100 million tokens that were created at the beginning. And this was in, uh, there was an error on the slide, it was in 2016. And that was during our ICO phase. In 2017, we burned seven, 67 million. Our current circulation and tokens is 32 million. Um, is there another question after that? Uh, we 200, 240 bitcoins. There is, but I don't know it off the top of my head. But we can follow up on that after. Yeah. Yeah, y yeah, yeah, I understand that. Um, we build blockchains for specific uses. So if you have a smart gun, for example, that connects to the internet or cre collects data in some way, um, that data would typically go and be uploaded to some kind of centralized facility like a, a network that holds all of that data in one place. And that data becomes vulnerable because someone can hack it or find it or, or spy on it, right? Um, but with, with this solution, you're putting that data onto a blockchain. So it's, it's uploaded from your firearm to, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so that might be, a, a smart gun is a, is a gun that has capability for, it has a, what? It's got a sense sensors or communicate, like uh, it's tracking different things. That's what makes a gun smart is just adding more technology to it. Yeah. Right now, so you can have different uses for it, you know, a gun that registers bullets coming out of it. That's already a smart gun. You've added a sensor to it. You got smart scopes. Yeah, you already have smart scopes out in the wild. People are using them like hunters. They have smart scopes that record their kill. So you can literally see through the scope and see what they shot and, and all that. I mean, anytime you add any kind of technology to a gun, I mean, a gun by itself, the reason people don't want technology on weapons is because they know once they pull the trigger, that will work. You know, and like you said, if you're a competitive shooter, you understand trigger pulled, gun works, that's, that's it. It's a device that will always work. So as soon as you add, um, and this is a controversy that we've been going through, one of our partners, Trigger Smart, it lets you wirelessly enable or disable the trigger on a gun. In Texas, I'm from Texas, 
I understand the controversy behind that. But we're not gearing, to, we're not gearing those devices to the public. We're gearing it to military, right? We're in the defense space because of that. <laughs> so when you, when you think of that application, you think of military overseas where there's a lot of friendly fire. So the best way to discourage that or prevent it, we're gonna hand our weapons to our allies who are from the region. They can turn around and shoot us. What's the best way to prevent that? Well, we don't have a best way because it will happen, but we can prevent at least some of it. And that by disabling those, you know, triggers on their devices or on the <laughs> Um, well, one of the other partners, and this is why we're taking on so many different partners and di different products, Justifier allows you to record video, audio, and GPS, like I said previously. If you're a gun owner and you're home, and you're home alone, and you, let's just say someone breaks into your home, right? You have to use your firearm. And a lot of times, it ends up becoming a he said, she said, if something happens, whether it's relationships with a spouse, and there's things that are happening in the home, and you had to fire. Now you have a way to record all that. So that, and there's different characteristics that would let the thing, uh, let the device know when to record. So as soon as you pulled it at, at 3 a.m., which you would nev you know, never do. So at that point, it'll start recording, and you have accountability in a box, so that you can go to court and not even need a lawyer, and just show them, these are the facts, this is what happened. And that's where, for personal use, I can understand that would probably be the best you know, solution if you ever needed to fire a weapon. Yeah, and a lot of these technologies, it's not up there anymore, sorry. Uh, is a lot of these technologies have applications that suit individuals, but also uh, have greater applications for military and defense, right? Um, right now, you can currently buy the trig token on Binance. We have two exchanges that are coming out, but due to agreements, we're not allowed to li uh, name them out loud. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate, but we understand that. There is also another question behind. Oh, okay. Okay, I guess that's it. Thanks, everyone. Oh, one more. I just like I'll I'll say it out loud. Thank you for your service. I mean, my my family's been military, Air Force, and everything. I appreciate it. Um, what would you say is something that we can focus on? Like we we're definitely taking criticism and critiques from the the the, the veterans, the people that have been in the industry. We're talking to the government already. They invite us to all of their different. Um, events and conferences, but I love, I personally love hearing the ideas that our active military or veterans have, because it gives, like I'm in marketing, so it gives me another perspective of like, hey, this is what we need to focus on, how we need to get them to be on board, because there's a lot of active military, there's a lot of veterans that don't get treated fairly and stuff like that, and I mean, right. we, we want to create, like this is the first step, you know? getting into government, and then trying to fix a couple other things that we can along the way.
Thank you. In a word, no. We don't require the use of a token. Um, if you, uh, the, the, there can be different types of use case uses for different types of clients. Yeah. And just as a side note, like all of these um, partners who have their own chains, they're not just like our chain is not going to be open completely to the public. We're going to vet all of our partners and all of those partnerships that we create because we want to ensure that our defense platform is stacked with fully vetted companies, not just people who have great ideas. So like Justifier, we took it from concept to product because we love the idea. We incubated them from concept to product. So. You know, and that's a really good point you brought up. Trigger Smart allows you to wirelessly enable and disable um, triggers on a gun device, right? If you're looking at safety, one of the key you know, points that they make in their presentation is that when you have the option to wirelessly enable or disable a trigger on a gun, you can literally just have it disabled so your children can never use it. Or, as Jenna was saying, you can have it so that it only reads your hand. And I know, and, and that, always, that is always gonna come at a controversy because on one hand, people can say, well, that's controlling guns. And on the other hand, well, that's, it, that's safety. I have a daughter. I would hate it if anything happened to her because I left my gun somewhere. But it's a choice. But it's a choice. And, and, this, and this is always going to be a choice. All of our information is always going to be an opt-in. We're never going to give the information to the government. We're working with the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, like yeah, the, the NRE actually, I, I don't know if they endorsed what we're doing, but they do like what we're doing. We spoke at an NRA um, event or conference in 2017, and we spoke with the head of the NRA, and he liked it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, any other questions, anyone? Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Jenna and Manny. Jenna um, from BlockSafe. Our next speaker will be here in just a few minutes. So if you'd like to grab a drink, uh, visit the lounge, be back here in about 10. <laughs>